number seven, Henry Royce wrestles control of the Flying Bee. Company founder W.O. Bentley is a legendary engineer, responsible for creating some incredibly memorable machines. Yet he wasn't the best businessman. While W.O. Bentley was undoubtedly a skilled engineer, he was not as proficient a businessman. And Bentley Motors eventually ran out of money and was put up for sale in 1931. 12 years after starting his own company, and in the midst of the Great Depression, in 1931, Bentley finds itself in the red. The company piles up over £90,000 worth of bills and is forced into receivership. The period of independence is extremely short, and they only built about 3,000 cars that we now call W.O.s, or the original W.O. Bentleys. Surprisingly, the outlook is far from bleak. English aircraft engine manufacturer D. Napier and Son let it be known that they aim to purchase the struggling mark. At the very last moment, they were outbid by an unknown consortium called the British Central Equitable Trust. And they bought Bentley for just over £125,000 on the 17th of November, 1931. At first, no one knows the true identity of Bentley's buyer. So W.O. knew that his company had been sold, but he found out the truth about who was behind the British Central Equitable Trust almost by accident. Amazingly, W.O. only learns his fate after his wife overhears a conversation at a cocktail party. One evening, his wife came home from a cocktail party saying that she'd overheard a gentleman saying that his company had just bought Bentley Motors, and he was Arthur Sidgraves, a name that W.O. instantly recognised because he was the managing director of Rolls-Royce. The trust's owner is none other than English motoring rival Rolls-Royce. When Bentley needed to be bailed out, Rolls-Royce said, you know what? We're not making a high-performance version of our vehicle anymore. Instead of developing something, why don't we just buy a manufacturer? And that way, we've got the gentleman's sporting car market covered along with the ultra-luxury market. In the 1920s, Bentley and Rolls-Royce were both making cars at the absolute pinnacle of the automotive marketplace. And so they were appealing to the same customers. Now, the reason that Rolls-Royce wanted to buy Bentley was simply to remove them from competition. Rolls-Royce's rationale for purchasing Bentley is simple, to clear a path for its Phantom II in the high-end luxury market. For the next 61 years, the two companies remain successfully intertwined. The Bentley brand, since it was so closely connected with Rolls-Royce for a long time, was the sportier of the brands. Rolls-Royce, you know, you'd be more likely to have a driver than to drive it yourself. The Bentleys were for people that wanted to drive their Rolls-Royce, basically. The intention is to stack the deck in the high-end luxury auto segment, with Rolls-Royce selling opulent machines, while Bentley produces more performance-oriented vehicles. Bentley becomes kind of a vassal to Rolls-Royce. It becomes kind of slightly sportier, but less expensive version of a Rolls-Royce. Soon, the synergies that bring the two marks together start to slowly fade away. Through the 50s and 60s, those brand identities started to erode to the point where the Bentley T-Series of 1965 was simply a Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow with Bentley badges. By the mid-60s, the two companies produced virtually indistinguishable machines. They were just a subsidiary of Rolls-Royce and a smaller company that built rebadged Rolls-Royces, essentially. And the brand had some great moments, but it really faded out by the 1970s. They really were just kind of cheap versions of Rolls-Royces, and the brand was kind of on hard times. It's a sad and shocking fall from grace for a storied mark. 
Finally, in 1998, the two companies go their separate ways. Yet Rolls-Royce's stewardship forever changes the destiny of the mark.